This is me racing one of the most affordable remote controlled cars in one of the most challenging RC races imaginable. I wanted to follow up on my slot car video from last year with another extreme miniature car race for 2023, but this time involving some outdoor environments that would push low cost RC cars to their limits. <laughs> this would involve three rounds. One, a hill climb up the steepest road in Britain. Two, a 10 mile endurance race through the night. I'm actually starting to get a bit pooped. And three, an amphibious car challenge across a dangerous stretch of water. It's all going wrong. The cars would have to be upgraded to take on each new challenge and fight to claim the Project Air trophy. The cars we'd be using were some super basic 4x4 crawlers, which don't really go that fast, pretty much going at walking speed, but this would make the race even more interesting, as it would test the driver's stamina, not just the cars. Talking of drivers, it would be me versus Matt from DIY Perks, just like last year. Okay, round number one, the hill climb challenge. We're going to go all the way up to the top of the hill, go round the cones, and the first one to cross the line at the bottom of the hill is the winner. Are you ready, Matt? I am. Let's go. Let's go. Three, two, one, go! Oh no! Oh, I'm behind! I'm oh, behind! How are you oh, so much look faster? Come on, little car! Matt's car took the lead and seemed to have slightly more power than Three. mine. Come on, James! Look at mine! Right, this is going to be interesting running back down the hill again. Matt just had to keep his car under control to claim an easy first victory, but then the pressure got to him. Oh, Matt's gone off! He's rolled! He's rolled, he's out! Oh no, he's not out. Thankfully, his car was undamaged, but I was closing in behind, leading to another dramatic mistake. After two consecutive crashes, I wasn't too far behind, but I ran out of road. Congratulations, <laughs> first round to Matt. Right then, so it's time for the modifications that we're going to be making to these cars before the next round, which is going to be an endurance race into the night. The course would be a 10 mile disused train track, traveling through tunnels and over bridges before eventually reaching the finish line. We only had two hours to make the modifications. One mod that we both decided on was to make the cars as light as possible, which should help increase range. Taking loads of stuff off to make it a bit lighter, and I've also installed a mini roll cage. So these, pieces of plastic come to 110 grams. Each of the standard batteries would only give us 20 minutes of driving, so we'd have to bring loads of them and do loads of pit stops. However, Matt had a better idea. I found a 2S battery, massive one, two cell. The difference between mine and Matt's batteries was capacity. Matt's battery was a 3300 milliamp hour, while mine was just a 300 milliamp hour battery. So I decided to combine a few of my batteries together to minimize the number of pit stops I'd have to do. With the clock ticking down and only limited time to do each modification, we ended up helping each other out in the spirit of good sportsmanship. I've got to win this round, otherwise I'm pretty much out of the competition <laughs> yeah. and Matt's gonna get, get away with it with uh, two out of the three races. With backpacks full of spare parts, we weren't that confident in the cars making it the full 10 miles without breaking down at least once or twice. Would these super cheap cars actually be able to drive that far? We had no idea. Conditions aren't that good today. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a wet race today. It's gonna be an endurance race for us, not just the cars. Okay. Round number two, race of endurance. Three, two, one, let's go. <laughs> After some aggressive driving from Matt, Matt's car took the lead, but not by much. Half an hour later, the gap had increased slightly, but the race was a long, long way from being over. You can see the little lights in the distance. Are you okay? Is everything going all right? Uh, at the moment, uh, we're in the, well, we're in last position, which isn't great, but uh, we're gonna keep going and see what ha can happen. We've just got to make sure that if, if Matt has a problem, we, we're right behind him so he can capitalise on his failures. <laughs> Matt, you're race leader at the moment. I know, I field. don't know what's happening. It feels uh, quite relaxing, to be honest. Matt's car was slightly faster than mine, which allowed him to slowly pull away and build up a decent lead. However, if either car broke down or needed attention, it would put them a long way behind. It needs to be... I'm just changing my trim. 
Unfortunately, you have to change it on the car. Oh, now it's going the other way. Little bit. That was pretty detrimental to your race. Oh, time it was. Team. Those were a vital few seconds lost there. <laughs> With a quick trim adjustment for Matt at the next station, I managed to get closer to him, but then... Just checking my wheels. Tyres looked like they were sort of wobbling a bit. I think it's okay. That was a bit nerve-wracking. I thought, I thought we had a problem there. Now much further behind, I had to keep it together and push on through the first creepy dark tunnel, following the now distant glow of Matt's headlights. Still, I was optimistic. It's been pretty tight this first mile. Um, now we're pretty much going into mile two. Come on, little car, you can do it. <laughs> Feeling pretty good about his race lead, Matt had time to take a breather and admire the scenery before pressing on over the big viaduct with me behind. Mile after mile, we raced across bridges and through tunnels, but Matt's car continued to be very strong. The cars never tired and showed no signs of slowing down, which for such tiny and cheap little cars was seriously impressive. Nothing's broken yet. Well, we're really impressed with the endurance of these cars, so uh, we decided to actually team up and do the last few miles together. Uh, I think Matt probably has won this one, but yeah, we're gonna have a bit of fun with it and see if we can get them over the finish line. Just as before, we decided teamwork was more fun than serious competition. So as long as neither car broke down, Matt would cross the line first and take the round win, but not before some fun final miles of driving together. Finally, the end was in sight. And across the line! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Uh, Six I hours can't. later! <laughs> Unbelievably, the cars had lasted 10 miles over bumpy, stony roads without so much as slowing down. Matt's car even doing it on one single battery. We've put a few more miles on these cars now. What more can they do? So, that was all very impressive, but what lay in store next for these cars would be the most perilous and testing obstacle yet the water stage. A course laid out on a two mile stretch of water, Rudyard Lake, would involve starting on dry land at the start gates before making a dash over the water to a floating marker. Once cleared, the cars just had to make it back to the start finish without sinking or flipping over, which would be game over for the cars and for their hopes of claiming the Project Air trophy. Okay, time for challenge number three, the amphibious car challenge. We've modified our vehicles to make them waterborne. So what we've done is gone completely ludicrous and added an enormous electric ducted fan onto the top of each car. So these are 90 millimeter EDFs, which are powered by separate batteries to the wheel batteries. Then we've got a servo that drives the rudder and that's going to make us steer because it's going to direct the airflow. Matt works on the boat hull itself, which is just made of a load of polystyrene cut to shape. It's a really easy modification, actually. Hopefully it's taking these cars to the next level. We don't know yet, though, whether they're going to work. So that's what's going to happen now. Yes, anything could happen, including sinking. While you see how we made these modifications to the cars, it gives me a good opportunity to tell you about the sponsor of this video, SolidWorks, who are providing a special software for makers with professional grade tools for your hobbies and personal Personal projects for just $99 a year or $9.99 a month. For this, you'll get both their locally installed and online design software that will help you to create anything you can imagine with online tools for designing, fabricating, rendering, and much more. There's also an active online design community where you can connect with fellow makers, share your work, learn, and get inspired. As you explore the maker offer, you'll have access to a dedicated online support community to help with any questions you may have. Please note, 3D Experience SolidWorks for Makers is not for commercial use though and is limited to a maximum of $2,000 profit per year. Elevate your maker game on your terms without compromise and within your means. See the links in the video description below to save 20% now and learn more about the maker offer. Right, now the final race. <laughs> okay, are we ready? As the loser of every round so far, I was to go first. Right. Everyone ready? Let's try this. It could all go disastrously wrong in a matter of seconds. Power on. Three, two, one. Let's go. Will it float? Lovely. Look at that. <laughs> yes. Perfect. It's working. 
Right, let's go. Let's get it over. Let's get it out there. It was off to a good start, but things would quickly head south, quite literally, as the car refused to go in the right direction. Oh, we're going a bit, we're a bit going the wrong way. I think the torque roll isn't really, <laughs> really working here. This isn't going well. Okay, I'm just warming it up. Just warming her up. With the torque from the giant electric fan and a slightly questionable hull design, the amphibious car was tricky to handle, but I soon got the hang of it. Yes, now I've got the, I've got the power on now, so there's more airflow over that rudder. Well, she's not sunk yet. <laughs> and that's a good thing, because I've become rather attached to this boat, over the, or this, this car, over the last uh, few days. Now it was plain sailing, and I could make a beeline straight for the marker. Oh, am I about to hit it? Oh no, I avoided it. More thrust, more thrust, come on, get it around. I've gone a bit far. Oh, I've cleared it. Right, now the home stretch. <laughs> this is going well, isn't it? All we need now is for it to tip over. Right, can I get it back to the gates? Because I need to go through the gates. The final challenge was to get the car to drive out of the water and over the line. But would there still be power to the wheels? Well, the, the lights are still on. That means that we've still got power, I think. OK, coming in. Coming in. Coming in. Come on. Yes! Fantastic! <laughs> yes! <laughs> nice! Great. That worked amazingly, and it's still alive. Amazingly, the car managed to get back safe and sound in a pretty respectable time, despite a few pirouettes here and there. Right, Matt's turn. Yeah, my turn. Let's, Let's see if you can drive it any better than me. <laughs> but would Matt have the same luck and even make it three out of three challenges won with a faster time? Well, it didn't get off to a good start. Three, two, one, go. Hey, off we go. <laughs> oh no, wrong way. Oh, no, not, <laughs> not a good well. start. Okay, right, go, go. there we go. With some minor assistance, Matt was back up and running and looking to overtake me. If only he could keep it together. Hey, that's right. way better. <laughs> well, was different. Oh no. Oh no, what's happened? Oh, it's gone wrong. <laughs> Come on, what? Matt, get it way. together, get it together. <laughs> it's all going wrong. Try not to crash into that marker. Come on. <laughs> oh, I'm round, I'm round. Here we go. And it's home straight. Yeah, this is a happy medium. I yeah, think. yeah. There we go, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you need the authority, the, yeah, yeah. the flow of air. It was looking good, but with the seconds ticking away, it all started to come undone. I won't... No, it's going the wrong way. It's won't, it won't straighten. No, we've lost it. Go around, go around, go around. Go around. Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so close to victory. <laughs> OK, drive out. Drive out. No. Oh, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. But he's almost there. And he's out. And he's out. Yay. And across the line. <laughs> nice one. Well done. That was uh, a valiant effort. With that, another year's race had concluded, and despite Matt's slower overall time, his car emerged victorious in two out of the three rounds, making him the 2023 champion. The real champions, though, are these tiny, cheap RC cars, which achieved incredible things, conquering the steepest road in Britain, completing a 10-mile endurance race, and even finally becoming surprisingly decent amphibious vehicles. Pretty incredible. Well, Matt, that was a valiant effort, and you are now the winner of the Project Air Trophy. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for watching. If you do like this kind of thing, then make sure to subscribe, like the video, and watch uh, this video right here. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you on the next video, on the next Project Air video. So thanks very much. See you later. Bye. Cheers.